On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make your 3D printer send you a text message when your print is done. And there it is. Now this may seem like a little bit of a complicated project, but it really isn't. I wouldn't even suggest it if it wasn't really simple for anybody to do. I do a lot with electronics, so electronics is you know, kind of easy for me because I've been doing it for so long. But I have not seen anything easier than this for connecting to the internet, sending text messages, and it all starts with this. The Little Bits Cloud Bit Starter Kit. I picked one of these up for $99. Actually, I got it on special for $79, but for $100 you get this kit of parts that all snap together and it's got some great features but the biggest thing is this right here is the cloud bit module it's basically a little internet computer with a dongle to connect to your Wi-Fi and you can connect things to it here I have a switch that gets pressed by the platform when it comes down presses on this sends a signal to the cloud bit module the cloud bit module sends the text message to your phone now here's the finished product you can see the switch is being pressed by the base itself and then I made this 3d printed platform that screws down through this thumb screw now that thumb screw was the same screw that held this clamp when the 3d printer was shipped to me so I just used that same thumb screw location in the design for the platform of the little bits project here you can get a better view of how the whole setup works. And I offset it a little bit, so in the back, if I wanted to, I could power this off a battery rather than the permanent cable here that's plugged into the wall. So let me step you through how to set up the Little Bits Cloud Bit Starter Kit. You go to littlebits.cc slash cloudstart to set it up. You have to register at the site, but once you do, you have a login and password. You sign in and then you're ready to go. The first step is to go to the left menu and click on Add Device. And then you give your cloud bit any name you want. I'll call mine L Products. Click on Save Name and then it'll take you to step one. In step one, it wants you to connect power to your cloud bit module. So let me take care of that. Okay, so now I'll hook everything together and power it up. I've got my power module my switch, my cloud bit, and the power adapter that came with the cloud bit. So I'll plug this in, connect the other end to the power module, and it just snaps in place like a, it's like a mini USB. And then I'll connect the switch, and these are magnetically connected, so they'll just snap right together. Now I've got power, you can see the red LED on here, so power is going through, now it should be going through the switch, so then I'll connect the cloud bit. Now let me show you, if you don't get them on the right side, look at how they don't, they don't want to connect, the magnets are fighting each other. And once you get it on the right side, they snap right together. So that's, it's kind of clever how it does that. And I've got LEDs showing up on the cloud bit, so now I've got power going all the way through, and we're good. Now these magnets are kind of weak. You know, they, they pop apart pretty easy. So what I like to uh, do is use this base that comes with the starter kit. It's got holes in it that line up with the bottom snaps to hold everything together. So I'll just pop that in place. And now we're ready to go back to the next step of setting up the cloud bit. I click to indicate we saw the light flashing. And then step two says to press and hold the switch until the blue light comes on steady. So I'll do that. I'll hold it down. Then it turns to blue flashing. And then blue steady. I click on the blue light is steady button. And that takes us to step three. Step three wants us to connect our computer Wi-Fi to the cloud bit module. 
then the computer starts looking for the cloud bit. Once they're connected, it'll take us to step four. In step four, my computer is now connected to the cloud bit, so I can select my home Wi-Fi for the cloud bit module. My home Wi-Fi has a password, so I enter the password and click save. Now the cloud bit module is set up, and I can put my computer back to my home Wi-Fi. The cloud bit is now set up, so we go to ifttt.com or if that then this to set up the routine for the text message. You'll need to register and create a login, but it's all free. Now I create the little program or recipe as they call it. I click on my account and then the create menu. A statement will show up, if this then that. I click on this, which is the input, and I select the little bit module. Just by searching on little, I can find the icon. Click on it, and now I have to choose which uh, cloud bit module to use because I have a couple of them. I'll click on L products that we created and click on create trigger. Now I have to choose the output by clicking on that. So now I want to search on SMS, text message, and there's a text message. Now I have to activate my phone. And this is how you do it. You click on activate and then a menu comes up. You enter your phone number. Now I'm just going to enter 555-555 but you will enter your real phone number and you'll get a text message with a four digit code that you need to enter for a pin. You enter that pin, click on the button and then it'll all hook up and you'll get a activated message. From there you can continue to the next step. Then you click on send me an SMS message and here's where you define what the message is. I choose 3D print is done. That's what I'll get text. Then I'll create the action and then I save it by clicking on the create recipe menu. Now it's linked together. When a signal comes into my cloud bit module it'll send a text message. So now we test it. I click on the button and I wait for a second and there's the text message. So now I go to Tinkercad to make the 3D printed base for the electronics. I made it 150 millimeters wide, 14 millimeters tall, and 78 millimeters deep. This will hold the electronics. But I wanted a lip around the edge and I knew the electronics needed to be 12 millimeters from the bottom. So I placed a hole that formed that wall and the base. Then I place the tab in the exact location to line up with the hole for the thumb screw. I made a hole for the thumb screw a little bit larger than it needed to be, but this allowed me to easily adjust things. Then I added a triangular piece just to give it strength. So now I group everything together as one solid unit. So now you can really see the lip that I made to hold the board in place. So the next step is to click on Design, Download for 3D Printing, and get the STL file that I'll send to the XYZWare for my DaVinci printer. I load it into the XYZWare, but I don't like the position. I like to look at the tab while it's printing to make sure everything's going well. So I spin it 180 degrees, and the trick here is to hold the Shift key. As you move the Shift key, it'll jump in 45 degree increments. Then I go to the move selection and just move it forward in the Y direction. Now I'm ready to set the print settings. I click on export. 10% fill is fine, but I don't really need this to be that accurate, so I go to 0.4 height. That way it prints quicker. I click on export. It'll slice in 11 seconds pretty quick. And then it's ready to send to the 3D printer. So now the 3D print is done. So I'll take it off the platform. And there's the nice lip, pretty smooth bottom. Place the cloud bit platform inside, and it fits nice. So I've got to raise the platform up, so I go to the jog mode, and I'm going to move it up in 10 millimeter increments. One will probably do it. So then I slide it in place, line up the screw. the screw on I can still pivot it and I just try to line it up tighten it 
and now I can test it. I'll bring it down. Whoop, I went the wrong direction. So I'll bring it down 10 millimeters and 10 more. And that should press the switch, which it did. And hopefully I get a text message. And there it is. My 3D print is done. So there you have it. My 3D printer sending me text messages when the print's done. And this is really handy because I can start a print and then go off and cut the grass or blow snow or watch the football game, whatever I want to do, and it'll let me know when the print's done. So then I can come back, get it off the print, off the bed, start a new print, and that's really handy if I'm doing a series of pieces that I need to put together so I can get it done quicker and more efficiently. So I hope you like this project because I combined my electronics knowledge with 3D printing. But I thought it was a really, really cool thing to show. So that's it. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That way YouTube knows you liked it. I'll see you next time.